So here we are again listening to Groove One. Get in your head again. We're not going to be interested in the melody on this one, but the melody is part of the tune, so we'll show it up here at the beginning. But we're going to break this rhythm section down into the individual parts and see why they're why they're playing what they chose to play. So let's clean house a little bit. I really just want to hear this guy. But to keep us honest, let's add a kick drum and a snare drum just so the thing kind of stays. So you make sure you don't lose the time. So let's listen to this guy come back around to the top. We're just coming back to the very top of the tune. This kind of a rhythm guitar feel, you guys, and this feel can also be played on piano. Um, this thing is called by various names, but I'll call it a Chuck Berry feel. It's just kind of like all those Chuck Berry tunes you might have played a thousand times. But it's not just a straight chord. There's a lot of movement going on in each chord. There's a little bass line in that version of it. And then there's that little rhythm this offbeat, that little syncopated pop, almost like a horn pop, horn punch. That's part of the tune, part of the groove, part of the part that the guitar player is playing. Space. That little hole of the guitar player in there is a good place for us to demonstrate. We don't get paid by the note ever. And sometimes it's just as good or better yet to leave some space. It's hard to remind yourself when not to play. But air, space in anybody's part enables another guy's part to come through there to be part of the groove too without having to slam through that one guy who never quits playing. It's much better when there's a conversation going on between instruments. Okay, let's go back to the top of this tune. Again, here's just the guitar. Playing a Chuck Berry part. It's shuffling, it's rhythmic, it's, it's sort of bassy, but it's this is bassy. Boop, 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 boop. Inside it, it feels like the part's going. <gasps> That's on purpose. It's like it makes it really organic. That part's impossible to sequence, man. You can't play a sequence of a guitar part that does those little details that makes it so organic. Slight difference. The little melodic movement has added an extra note in it. And at the end of each one, you hear the guitar player also go, plays a little thing, plays his part, then play, opens up just a little bit, does more stuff on the five chord because the five chord is all about tension and excitement and turnaround. A third little variation on what he's been playing. That opening up at the end of the little phrase lets the jangle out, that lets the guitar breathe and open, then it brings it back in. You guys, that's super duper important. Just don't strum up there like a robot. Last verse. That's actually copying part of the bass part that he's already learned off the bass player. So for the last verse, they're kind of coming together to make a final ta da sort of verse to take the tune out. Remember the guitar player puts this big hole in here because other guys are moving here and they come back together. That was the guitar concept playing a Chuck Berry sort of rhythm part. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at bass player next. 